In this video, we are going to discuss the phase law nu, which we abbreviate it as PLL, and this is a very important circuit that we are going to use it uh, now, and we are going to use it again later uh, in our course. It has many uses. So the phase law nu is an important circuit that consists of three main components. The first component is a multiplier. The second component is a filter, low pass filter. And the third component is called the VCO, voltage control oscillator. The input signal, the input signal, which is the, which is the signal that comes from the antenna, it comes to the phase of loop from this direction, and this is a signal coming from the voltage control oscillator, the VCO. And what is the voltage control oscillator? Voltage control oscillator. Let's think about the name. It's an oscillator. Oscillator means it's a sinusoidal source. Oscillator, it's a circuit that oscillates. It gives you a sinusoidal signal. Voltage control means it's an oscillator that is controlled by voltage, which means that the frequency of it is controlled by voltage, by the input voltage to it. So the input voltage to the VCO, which we are going to call for now E of T, it controls, it controls the frequency that is coming out from the VCO. So if we assume that the signal coming out from the VCO is V cosine, let's say omega T plus theta naught, certain random phase, omega of this signal is controlled by the voltage here. That's why we call it voltage control dosage. So omega here has a linear equation with the input voltage of T. We can write it as omega C plus some constant multiplied by E of T. Which means what? Which means that if the input voltage is zero to the VCO, so by default our VCO is going to generate a frequency omega C. So its default is omega C, which is in agreement between the transmitter and receiver. The transmitter and receiver, they agree, I'm going to transmit to you using a certain frequency, let's say uh, 1000 kilohertz or, uh, or uh, 90 uh, megahertz or 88 megahertz, whatever. So this omega C is the default carrier frequency. This is the carrier frequency by default that is in agreement between the transmitter and receiver. And then if E of T is positive, then the frequency generated by the DC is going to increase a little bit above omega C. If E of T is negative, the frequency generated by the VCO is going to be less than omega C. So the frequency of the sinusoidal wave at the output of the VCO is controlled basically by this signal, which later we are going to call it an error signal for a reason that will be clear in a few minutes. Error signal. Okay, so this is basically this is basically the phase log loop. It has three components: multiplier, low pass filter, VCO. Voltage control to see. In order to understand how the phase log loop works, as you see, this phase log loop it has a feedback. And usually, mathematical analysis of systems with feedback it's not easy to do. That's why here in our course we are not going to explain the details of the mathematical analysis of the phase log. However, we are going to explain a general picture of how the phase log loop works. Okay, we are going to give the flavor of how it works. However, keep in mind that the mathematical analysis, there is a rigorous mathematical analysis that is more complicated of, of uh, more complicated than what we are going to say here in this lecture. However, hopefully in this lecture, I'm going to give you a good understanding of how this phase log loop works. In order to understand how it works, let's assume that we receive a signal that is A, I'm going to use another point. We receive a signal that is A sine omega CT plus theta I. So we receive a signal and we assume it's sine here for simplicity. And keep in mind that any cosine wave, if it was cosine, we can always convert it to sine by subtracting minus pi over 2, right? So if you receive a cosine wave, you can always write a sine, a cosine as a sine. 
So don't worry about, uh, I know that you are asking yourself now, why are we using sine here, although we have been using cosine all the time. So any cosine wave, any cosine, can be written as, uh, for example, can be written as sine omega ct, okay, minus pi over 2, plus theta. And then we can combine these two phases into that phase called theta i. So any cosine wave can be written as sine. So we are going to write it here as sine for simplicity of analysis. So you assume that you receive a sine omega ct plus theta i. And for the beginning of our understanding, we'll assume that we need the synchronization between the two phases. So you receive a random phase theta i that you don't know, and you are, the PCO is generating a cosine with another phase theta naught because the PCO doesn't know what, what is the phase of the received signal. Theta i, we don't know, it's usually random. So we'll assume that we don't know theta i, the PCO doesn't know theta i, so it will generate a sinusoidal wave with theta naught. Okay, and theta naught, of course, is different from theta i. And we'll assume here that we need only to synchronize the phase. So we need theta i to follow uh, theta naught to follow theta i, right? This is our purpose of the phase loop loop, synchronization between the phase. And later we are going to discuss synchronization of the frequency too. So let's start first with phase synchronization. If we multiply these two segments, and let's assume in the beginning, in the beginning, we just switch it on our circuit. I'm going to try to explain it with a slow motion, with a slow. So once we switch on our circuit, at E of t, the signal here is zero. There is no signal. Okay. Of course, I'm going uh, to, uh, as I said, to explain it in a slow motion. Something that happens in microseconds or uh, even nanoseconds. Okay, but I'm going to go slowly. Once we switch on the circuit, there is no signal here. E of t is zero, so the frequency here is omega c. So the frequency here is omega c, right? Because E of t is zero, so the frequency of the VCO will be omega c. When we multiply these two signals, when we multiply these two signals, we are going to get, let's say, a signal here x of t, and x of t will be sine multiplied by cosine, it will be half sine the sum plus half sine the difference, so it's going to give you a b over 2 sine the sum, which is 2 omega ct plus theta i plus theta naught, plus half sine the difference, which is a b over 2 sine the difference, which is sine theta i minus theta naught. And then x of t is going to pass through a low pass filter. So after the low pass filter, we have here high frequency component. This component will not pass through the low pass filter, so this component will be cancelled with the low pass filter and after the low pass filter we are going to get only we are going to get only the second component which is a b over 2 sine theta i minus theta naught and we are going to call theta i minus theta naught we are going to call it theta error the error between the two phases theta naught and theta i we are going to call it theta e theta error so this is the signal after the low pass filter this is the signal E of t. So after the first round, in the beginning E of t was zero, so the frequency here was omega c, we multiply the two signals, we got a new E of t, which is a b over 2 sine theta e. Look at E of t now. It is proportional to theta e. It's a constant multiplied by sine theta e, which means what? Which means if theta e is zero, Sine zero is it? So the error signal will be zero. So if it happens that theta naught and theta i they are equal, there is no error between them. Then the error signal will be zero, and this zero will keep generating frequency omega c, and theta naught is equal to theta i, and omega c is equal to omega c, and everything is fine. Now we are synchronous. But what happens if theta e 
is positive. If theta e is positive, sine theta e will be also positive. So there will be a positive error signal. And theta is positive means what? Theta is positive means that theta i is greater than theta naught, right? Theta e positive means means that theta i is greater than theta naught, right? So if theta e is positive, then the error signal will be positive. The error signal is going to be positive, which means what? Which means that you are going to generate a frequency of the BCO greater than omega C. So the frequency omega will be greater than omega C. This means what? When you increase the frequency of the oscillator, it's like you are telling the oscillator what? You are telling the oscillator, run quickly, speed up, right? Because the frequency means what? When you increase the frequency of the oscillator, frequency means phases per second. How many radians per second you are doing? So if you increase the frequency of the oscillator, because the EFT is positive, so you are going to increase the frequency of the oscillator above omega C. So you, it's like you are telling the oscillator, speed up, increase your speed, try to catch the phase here, right? So the oscillator is going to increase the frequency, which means that it's going to run quickly, it's going to do more radians per second so that the phase here catches the phase here. So it's going to run quickly until the phase of this sinusoidal wave catches the phase of this sinusoidal wave. And with this sense, you can think about you can think about the whole thing inside the cosine here as a phase, let's call it a phase of the VCO, this is the angle of the VCO, and you can think about the, everything inside the sign here as the angle of the received signal. So now when you increase the frequency of the oscillator, you are telling the oscillator run quickly, do more radians per second so that the angle inside the cosine here catches the angle inside the sign here, right? Until it happens that the angle here catches or locks, that's why we call it phase dot do. It locks with the angle here. Once the angle here locks or catches the angle here, the error signal is going to be zero again. And once the error signal is going to be zero again, so once it locks, the error signal is going to be zero again. Okay, after locking with the phase, once it is zero again, the frequency here, the frequency of the oscillator is going to go back to omega C and the phase will be equal to the phase. So this is in case theta E is greater than zero. So if theta E is greater than zero, which means that theta I is greater than theta naught, the error signal will be positive. It will tell the oscillator to increase your speed, speed up, do more radians per second until it catches the phase of the sine wave here, the received sine wave here. Once this happens, the error signal will go back to zero again. And once it goes back to zero, the frequency here will be the same as the frequency here, omega C, and the phase will be equal to the phase. The third case, if theta E is less than zero. If theta E is less than zero, which means it's negative, this means that theta I is smaller than theta naught. If theta E is less than zero, then the error signal, it will be sine something negative, right? Constant multiplied by sine, a negative value, which will be negative. So in this case, in this case, the error signal will be negative. And when the error signal is negative, the frequency of the oscillator omega will be less than omega C. So omega here, in this case, will be less than omega C. What does it mean if you reduce omega? It's like you are telling the oscillator, reduce your speed, slow down. Reduce the number of radians per second that you are doing. So slow down, reduce your speed until you reach to the same phase of the sign. Because now, 
Theta i is less than theta naught. The phase here is larger than the phase here. So you are telling, you are telling the VCO reduce your speed because your phase is larger than the phase at the antenna. The, your phase of the oscillator, the phase of the oscillator is larger than the phase of the antenna. So you tell it reduce your speed, slow down until the two phases lock together. They lock together and they start moving together. Once the oscillator reduces the speed, after a while, the two angles, the angle inside the cosine, the whole thing here and the whole thing here is going to be equal. And once they are equal, the error signal is going to be zero. Once, once they lock together, once that lock, locking happens, the error signal is going to be zero, and once the error signal is zero, the frequency of the cosine wave here is going to go back to the original value omega c, and the phase will be equal to the phase. So as we see here, this is the general understanding of how the phase dot loop works. The feedback is very important here, because if the angle here is larger than the angle here, the error signal is going to be positive, which means that you are going to increase the speed of the, the frequency uh, more and then you catch until you catch the phase here. When the phase here is less than the phase here, the error signal is going to be negative. It's going to tell the VCO reduce your speed, slow down until the phase of the uh, signal at the output of the VCO equals the received the phase of the received signal. And once they lock together, once the two phases they lock together, the error signal is going to be zero. Assume after they locked, assume that after they locked together, some sudden change happened to the theta i here. Some sudden change due to uh, you are moving with your car in the street and uh, the path or that you are receiving your signal from has changed for some physical reason. A sudden change here, it will cause the error signal to be either positive or negative, and then within few microseconds it will ask the VCO to increase speed or decrease speed until it locks again. So the two phases will be almost locked. Even if one of them changes, the other one will catch it. One of them changes, the other one will catch it immediately. Without even you feel when you listen to your radio signal, you will not feel it because it happens in microseconds. Okay? So once one of them changes, the other one will catch it and uh, this process keeps going all the time and all the time that once they lock together they will stay locked the two phases will stay locked together